Last time on Super Daniel Rocket, Dylan, LD, and Daniel for it fall over the Infinity Glove, causing them to enter a new dimension, which kind of looks like a guest room. Luckily, they were able to get out after doing a Let's Predicted episode and beating the crud out of the Interrupter. Ah! <coughs> oh, ah, ah, stop it! Oh. It makes more sense if you watch the video or not. We last saw our three characters getting ready to watch Far From Home. And now, for the epic conclusion, that really isn't that epic, although it technically is, because it took so long, because Daniel was busy with his Enterprise project. But anyways, on to the conclusion. Uh, what a day, man. Oh, hey Daniel, how's it going? Oh, hey Lynette, um, it's going fine. Just got back from watching Far From Home with my friends and all that. So, um, yeah, I'm fine. Oh yeah, you're watching Far From Home. How was it by the way? Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm pretty sure you're gonna be reviewing it right now, aren't you? Yeah, you know me already. Yeah, I'm gonna go there and do the review right now actually. Well, okay then. Man, you guys really destroyed this thing. Well, looks like you're not gonna be using this for a while. Well, don't worry. It's not like we're gonna be using it anytime soon. The interrupter has been beat up by my good pal LD, so uh, I don't think we'll be needing it for a while. So, um, yeah. Uh, anyways, hey guys and gals, it's me today Rocket, and of course today we're going to be reviewing Spider-Man Far From Home. So of course, as always, going to start off with a non-spoiler review, and then we're going to go on to some spoilers. So um, I feel like it's best to start off the non-spoiler review by talking about this version of Spider-Man, because I haven't actually talked about it that much on the channel, surprisingly. So um, yeah, I heard a lot of people are kind of split with this you know, version of Spider-Man. Some people like it because of its uniqueness compared to the other version of Spider-Mans that we have in the past. But some people hate it because of that, because it kind of removes some of the aspects that make Spider-Man special. So, um, yeah, I also heard, of course, you know, the big word, I mean, like, the big term, I guess you can say. You know, people say that, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming is a bad, you know, bad Spider-Man movie. I've, I've seen that a lot on YouTube and, you know, Instagram. And a lot of people have good reasons as to why that's the case. And a lot of people who say, you know, you know this, good, this version of Spider-Man is a, you know, good Spider-Man. Actually, they also have good reasons as well, even though some reasons are kind of just like Tim Allen is hot and that's it. But uh, yeah, there are pretty good reasons for both sides. As for me, I kind of really like that they kind of try to make it unique compared to the others because I kind of feel like the general audience who see Spider-Man are just going to see this as the same exact thing and I probably think that people are just going to get tired of it. So I kind of feel like I really like they try to make it unique. Although I kind of feel like they could have still you know, kept some of the aspects, don't get rid of everything entirely like, you know, Uncle Ben and all that, I kind of feel like that still needs to be there, of course, because I kind of felt, I always found it weird that they never mentioned Uncle Ben at all in these movies. So, um, yeah, I kind of feel like they could have at least put some aspects. But still, the uniqueness factor, as I mentioned earlier, is a pretty good attempt, of course. I really like the idea of, you know, Spider-Man is trying to be, you know, the successor to Iron Man. So yeah, I kind of really like that idea. I know a lot of people don't really like that idea, but I kind of feel like it makes sense for the MCU. So um, yeah, I also like the idea of, you know, Spider-Man is still a teenager at this time because I kind of feel like, you know, with them, you know, showing more of him, you know, in high school and all that, I kind of feel like it kind of makes it, you know, this movie relate to us. I kind of feel like it's a movie meant for us because when I see the first movie, I really felt, you know, more into it because, you know, I see some stuff that are really meant for, you know, teenagers and all that to, you know, enjoy and all that. So I really like that idea for, you know, this version of Spider-Man and of course in the movies. But I had a bit of a problem when I first saw the trailers for Far From Home because they're putting a lot of the whole dimension stuff and you know, all of the elementals and of course this is out the, move, the next movie after Endgame. I kind of feel like they put a lot more pressure onto this movie and I kind of feel like it might have you know, taken out some of the charm of the first film. But luckily, even though that's the case, without spoiling anything, even though there's a lot of stuff there that's going on in Far From Home, don't worry, it will all make sense and I kind of feel like the charm of the first movie is still there, you know. It's still meant for teenagers and all that. I mean, of course, other people can still enjoy it, but it's more enjoyable if you're a teenager. 
And plus, the elementals do know how to make a show because every time I see them on screen, of course, the action sequences and all that, I kind of feel like they're done pretty well here, and I kind of feel like it will make you go, whoa, that's so cool. So, um, yeah, I really like it, and I kind of feel like you really need to have that if you're making a big monster, like, you know, as we see in the movie, we've got that Hydro Man and Molten Man. Yeah, that's what they call them, it's Hydro Man and Molten Man, and technically Sandman as well. So, um, yeah, I really like that. So I really like how they did the spectacle here as well. And that's pretty much all I can say without spoiling the movie. Because of course I want to go more into spoilers, of course, as always. So, um, yeah, I really like how this movie is handled here. I still like that they have the same charm as the original Spider-Man, of course, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming. I really feel like this is actually a sequel to Far From Home, even though this takes place after, you know, the biggest blockbuster ever for Marvel, which of course is Avengers Endgame. They still managed to make this a sequel to Homecoming, you know, even though we have a big impact after Endgame. So, um, yeah, anyways, on to the spoiler warning. Cue it. Lean at. Go. So I first want to start off the spoiler review by talking about Mysterio because I really like how he's handled here. Of course he is the bad guy and I'm pretty much sure everybody expected that because, you know, he was like that in the comics and, you know, TV shows I think as well. And speaking of which, in the comics and probably also the TV shows of course, he doesn't really actually have powers. All of these mystic powers that we presume he has are technically not real, they're just special effects that he has and he was a special effects artist. So yeah, who became a villain of course. So yeah, I kind of feel like they're trying to make a modern version of that in this film because of course, you know, the modern day equivalent of special effects are just, you know, CGI. If you want to make an explosion, CGI probably, or maybe there will be actually special effects, but yeah, mostly nowadays they use CGI, and I kind of feel like they try to represent that with, you know, holograms, because of course as we see in Civil War, you know, we have some kind of really realistic holograms, which surprisingly we find out here, Quentin Beck created, so I kind of feel like this leads into him actually using this, and it's kind of the equivalent of, you know, using special effects CGI, so um, yeah, I really like that, and plus, his actual suit, not the one that where he has the cape and all that, his actual suit is just actually, you know, those things that people wear, so they become a CGI character, the black and white stripe thing. So yeah, I kind of really like that, that's a really nice touch. So I kind of feel like they really tried to make, you know, a modern version of, you know, Mysterio, and they really did it pretty well here. I really like this, this kind of villain, it's a pretty interesting villain. So yeah, with these holograms that Mysterio is creating, that means stuff like Hydro Man and Molten Man aren't actually there. They're not real, they're just holograms, which to be honest, I'm totally fine with because of course, if we add more than one villain into a Spider-Man movie, it will end badly as we've seen in the past. So um, yeah, I guess it makes sense. But uh, yeah, what I don't like, you know, with all of this is that, you know, Maria Hill and Nick Fury aren't actually real as well. They were actually just scrolls the entire time in this movie. So yeah, but to be honest, it's not that bad because technically, as we recall in Captain Marvel, the scrolls technically put in, you know, recent memories, they get me recent memories of who they're trying to transform into. So I kind of feel like if Maria Hill and Nick Fury were actually there, the, you know, the conflict and everything in the movie will still be the same. Nothing will kind of change in that, in that way. So um, yeah, I kind of feel like they were there technically and I kind of feel like I really like that because I really like how they handle Nick Fury here. It's really fun, it's really great to see him actually there. I mean, of course we've seen him in Captain Marvel, but that was a kind of a different character because he was a lot more younger one. Not really that, you know, serious. But here is actually the real serious Nick Fury. It's glad we see him back. And of course we and of course we have to talk about Maria Hill because I, you know, made that video. So yeah, I really like how they handle her too here. It's kinda of reminiscent of, you know, her appearance in Age of Ultron. Well not entirely, but I kinda of feel like I kinda of have that vibe that, you know, it's you know, it's it's her Age of Ultron self. So I really like that because of course the Age of Ult Age of Ultron Maria Hill it's actually my favorite version of Maria Hill. I kind of feel like they try to implement that in this movie, and I really like that. And plus, I really like that really nice snipe moment where he tries, where she tries to take down that drone. That was pretty nice. That was pretty cool. So um, yeah, I'm fine with them just being scrolls. They're kind of feel like they would still be the same if they were actually there. As for Spider-Man himself, I really like how he's done here. They're basically going through the struggles between you know his superhero life and his regular teenage life. As we can see in the movie, you know. He's in love with MJ now, he wants to express his love to, you know, MJ in the field trip. And on the other side, you know, Iron Man is dead and people are looking at Spider-Man as the next Iron Man. So yeah, you can kind of see the struggle here for Peter Parker. 
So yeah, I really like it. It's kind of reminiscent of, you know, you know the Spider-Man 2. You know, sure, it's not as well done as Spider-Man 2, but it's still a pretty good attempt. And plus, I really like MJ as now, you know, the love interest of Peter Parker. And it's much more better than Liz in the first movie. I don't know, I kind of feel like she was more interesting. And I'm glad she has more screen time in this film. So yeah, that's pretty much all of my opinions on, you know, Spider-Man Far From Home. I really like this movie. I don't think it's my favorite, you know, superhero movie of 2019. I think that still goes for Shazam for me. So yeah, I still like it. It's a pretty decent film. I'm glad this was actually a sequel to, you know, Homecoming rather than, an, you know, an Endgame follow-up, as I mentioned earlier. I'm glad that was, the, that was the case. I'm glad it was a sequel. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. But of course, as always, since, you know, this is a Marvel film after all, of course, let's see what my friends have to think. So without further ado, let's, you know, see what they have to think. My opinion from the movie from a home is a lot of plot twists in it and never expected it didn't happen. It's unexpected, uh, you yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of you should watch the previous movies before this. It's yeah, I agree. Sense. So yeah. What's up guys? So you should watch Spider-Man home far away from home. It was good. Many pop pieces, especially some villains that are in the comic pop up here but they don't do that much talking. You should watch it. Uh, so with that said, Alright guys and girls, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video as well as the Let's Predict It video I did a while back. You know, with my friends and all that. It was really fun to make that movie, I mean the video with my friends. It was really great. So yeah, it was a really interesting experience to have my friends come over here to make the video. So I um, mean, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that as well. So of course, the next movie that we're going to be reviewing is actually going to be the Lion King live action movie. Yep, we're going to be reviewing that. And I have a lot to say even though I haven't watched it yet. So yeah, that will be something to look forward to. So yeah, stay tuned for that. So um, until then guys, rock it on. Usually I just walk off screen, but uh, I want to use the computer, so um, yeah.